I'll get asked to like MC or do stand up at like various charity events. And I was doing one, I don't know, it was probably seven, eight years ago now. And it was a, like four or 500 person Indian lawyers convention. And I started telling them about just kind of riffing, like telling them about how my parents were really pressuring me to get married. And every day I'll check my email and it'll be a resume and headshot of some girl with the last name Patel who lives on the other side of the country and that I was supposed to take that resume and cold call the girl and say, Hey, uh, a distant relative of, of yours is friends with your neighbor and connected us. And, uh, you know, they think we'd be great for marriage. Um, uh, Hey, I'm Ravi, you know, <laughs> like this is this really awkward way of like blind dating and cold calling. And I was killing, I remember like people were dying laughing in a way that I've never felt before because there was this like, almost behind it was like a real emotion, like a a visceral, like, like we were all in the same tragedy. And, and then I kind of had this epiphany while I was noticing that where I stopped and I go, Hey, how many of you are single? And everyone raises their hand. And I'm like, oh, that's right, because that's why you're here. That there's never a, a legal scenario, a scenario where, you know, you need to get another Indian lawyer on the horn. You know, it just no. There's the the only scenario is, hey, you're you're Indian too. I met you at the lawyer convention. <laughs> uh, you know, want to go out. Yeah, I want to go out. You're not going to believe this. My mom just emailed me your picture. I'm like, I met that girl in San Diego. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was, and then afterwards, after that show, like everyone was coming up to me and they're like, oh, I'm so glad you talked about that. You should do a comedy tour, write a book. And I was like, okay, good, good. Because at the time I was looking for career opportunities. So I thought, okay, this will be my direction. That's good. Uh, it seems important. People are sharing their stories. They're hilarious. And then they're also selling, t- sharing stories that are really tragic in nature, like stories of suicide. And so that's when I knew, like, this is something important, and I feel like I have an opinion or a voice in it. And then, um, you know, like many things in my life, it, it disappeared, kind of like guitar lessons, which I, I'd still like to pick up one day. <laughs> um, and uh, what happened was, you know, just as the movie, you know, as you see in the documentary, we went on this family trip to India. I had just gotten out of this relationship with this white girlfriend who I never told mom and dad about. And then I'm going through this eat, pray, love kind of, uh, you know, pain. Uh, and simultaneously, there's my parents. And Geetha had just bought this camera. Yeah, I, just, you- uh, I had just finished making my first documentary. It took seven years, and it was in a war zone. And I could barely move and was exhausted. And... Um, totally like broke and just thought, you know what, I'm going to learn how to use a camera during this vacation. I'm going to get some work when I get back. And the yeah, last thing never, I'm going to do, what? She never, did, she never did learn how to use the camera as you just saw the movie. That's great, Robbie. Um, no one wants to listen to you right now. So <laughs> I, I thought, you know, the last thing I want to do right now is make a documentary. Like, no. And so I'm on this trip just doing my own thing, filming dad's charity work. And Ravi is like really suffering and he, it's really funny. And so I, of course, decide to film it because that's what sisters do. She's just kind of playing with the camera. Yeah. And we just (laughs) have these conversations and I'm talking about like, this is crazy that I'm a, a grown man and I'm hiding a girlfriend from my parents. You know, there's this weird thing where when I would tell my non-Indian friends that I hadn't told my parents about her, they're like, you are an asshole. Like, how could you do that to her? That's so disrespectful. You are a small, small man. And then I turn to my Indian friends and I tell them that I have this white girlfriend. And the first thing they say is, you didn't tell your parents, did you? (laughs) It's the exact opposite. Because Indians know, they get it. You don't really show your parents, you don't come out of the closet with a white girlfriend until you know you're sure. Yeah, and until you know they're ready to hear it. Exactly. 
And so, and they never are actually. Yeah. So the coming out of the closet is a coming out of the closet. Like you're ready for like the whole, the conversations and the, are you sure? And can we change this? Is there, you know, maybe it's just your brain. Let's go to the temple. You know, it's the whole, it's the whole thing. And so basically all of a sudden know that you have a white girl. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's very much it's, like, yeah, like, I mean, come out of the closet. Except, so we, so, we're so filming we're this on vacation. Like we're talking, yeah. you know, this is what's happening. Ruby's doing this. He's hilarious. And I'm like filming and we're giggling and we just think, you know, we're just two siblings having fun. So we're thinking, okay, our, everybody thinks their family videos are funny. So we're just having fun. But we also, Ruby had this idea. He's like, why don't we do like a journalistic version of this? Like, why don't we do a Morgan Spurlock? kind of, you know, a very academic look at this aspect of our culture. Isn't it interesting? My parents got an arranged marriage. The arranged marriage is premised in a very simple idea that marriage is, a, is a, almost an economic opportunity to put everyone in a better position. So it's less about the individuals and more about two families joining forces and hopefully making a stronger unit. So in India, the main thing, and this is the same thing that's reflected in modern day in the biodata, the main thing in arranged marriage is compatibility. Uh, socioeconomic background, cultural values, do they eat the same food, do they speak the same language, do they live near each other? In my dad, mom and dad's case, it was pretty simple. You would go to any village that on the map was counterclockwise from yours. That, I guess, prevented incest because you were, everyone was going counter. Like, if you went clockwise, mistakes. So, so um, you know, how do we, you know, I guess, the, I guess the Patel complex in coming to America was how do, they, how do we keep the same value system intact? How do we keep the culture just as strong? How do we keep the same system going? And that's when they created... The biodata, which is this matrimonial resume that the Patel parents pass around around amongst each other to help Patels find each other and marry each other. And everyone in our family, all of our cousins, people who were even born here, have done this system. They're in successful, happy relationships. Everyone except, of course, us. And I guess that's why eventually this movie ended up becoming about us and not someone else. I, I would imagine as soon as there were two Patels would probably be the kind. <laughs> <laughs> once, That's once a good second, question. I mean, gosh, I don't know. We should ask somebody. Yeah, you would think that it, it wouldn't have been like incest, like siblings. So it wasn't like the first four Patels. There must have been at some point where there were so many Patels. Because here's the thing about last names in India, which is important. It's not just a family name. The last names are actually indicative of caste. So Patels were labeled for, you know, being a certain kind of person. I want to say farmers, the, farmers. I want to say the meaning of Patel is farmer or something like that. It's so, in the farmer class. Yeah. So I think it actually started as like this label that was given to a huge group of people who, yeah. were, who were not related. It's like, you know, bricklayer, whatever, yeah. you know, shoemaker, that kind of thing. And so Patels are the farming families and they're all from a certain area so it's kind of like if americans only married americans which isn't too far off you know a lot of people want to marry someone who's like them and we know schumacher schumachers are always looking for other schumachers for the same reason <laughs> well i was most shocked that i didn't it's really hard to get status on airlines is what i what i noticed I thought that I would be like some sort of a platinum level by the time I was done, but it takes more than that. They have to be first class flights. Of course, I was always flying coach. So I, I, I don't know. When, you know, fly coach, you stay coach. Um, the dates, I don't know. They were really fun. It was interesting. I mean, I was at a point in my life where I was probably more open minded than I had ever been. And I was, I would, you know, by open minded, I mean probably desperate. And <laughs> I. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I looked at this thing that mom and dad were saying, which is, you know, we're just going to introduce you to these girls. That's it. After that, it's all you. Do what you want to do. And when, you really, when I really sat down and thought about it, I looked at two things. One, the system works. It's worked for everyone. Mom and dad are, as you saw in the movie, an incredible couple. 
They're so good together. And I have friends who have done this system and are so happy together. So there's an empirical basis for saying, hey, this thing works. Two, I, I really wanted to meet someone. And if I end up finding that girl, who cares how yeah. it happens, you know? I feel like um, it's like this, okay? If, if somebody said to you, I know how to help you find love and keep love and stay in love. I know exactly how to make that happen. I know how to make you happy. I know it. Take this pill. Take yeah. this pill and just swallow it. And you, you, you're like, okay. You know what I mean? And that's where the community comes in. It's like mom and yeah. dad have match their matchmakers for so many marriages. They, um, you know, everyone has used this system in our family. And unfortunately they're all really happy. You know, like we don't agree with the system, but we can't really argue with it because they are like, they're all different ages. They're younger than us. Our cousins who were born here yeah. do this. And it's like, Oh man, you know? And so it is, I think that's the gray area. And that's why like Rubby and I wanted to make something that told that story as opposed to like so many people, so many, you know, so many films out there about like, Oh, the crazy Indian parents, they got an arrangement. Oh, isn't that weird? You know, that's not really what it's like for most of us. We don't see our parents as crazy. We don't see their process as crazy. We actually struggle with it because we want to take that pill. I think it's like an exploration of how do you find love? What it, how do you know when you have it? What, and how do you keep it even if you already have it? What is normal? What is healthy? Like all those things that people go through on a daily basis, even if they're married, even if they have kids, it's like the constant relationship struggle. I think that was the exploration. And I think, um, Rebbe, jump in, but I, I feel like one of the greatest lessons we learned was from dad. He said, love is a choice. And he said, love is a commitment. So and he said, in life, you have to make commitments. And so many of us grow up watching all these movies and thinking love just happens and it shouldn't be this hard. And you know what I mean? All these things. And they come from a, a place where love is a choice, you know? I, I mean, it's almost like a, a metaphor for like, like, like the, the journey of what this film was to our family is almost a metaphor for um, what the search for love is like. You know, you know in Gita, like, for example, what you just said, it's like love was a choice even with, with us as a family in deciding, like, you know, as sibling filmmakers, that we couldn't fire each other. We wanted to still love each other. We wanted to make a movie together. So our, the choice that we made was that we wanted to love each other and respect each other and just try harder. And as a result, we became better collaborators and we became better siblings. And then as a result of this time of our lives and becoming more respectful of mom and dad's point of views and things and then, then doing the li likewise and being better communicators, the family became closer as well. And I think that permeated into how we look into relationships. Yeah. I mean, I think what we're... What we got out of this experience is like this miracle relationship with each other. And the only way, the other day, don't ask me why I was doing this, but I was watching the crane kick scene from Karate Kid. He's getting like, beat, the hell is beaten out of him. I'm trying not to cuss because my parents are here. But like, you know, I mean, they, they, he's just going down, going down. This guy's like, you know, kicking him in the face, kicking him in the balls. Like, oops. And, you know, he's like just all, so he's going to. Yeah, we get it. We get it. He's getting beat up. He's getting beaten up. And yeah. we're like, oh, no, oh, no. And that's how our relationships have been. And then at the very end, he gets up and he's like, oh, he does his crane. He gets ready for the crane. You're like, oh, my God, I didn't think he had energy, any energy left in him. And there's no way he can win this. And then he kicks, you know, the other guy with the crane kick. And everybody's like, Whoa! And like that moment is the moment we experience at the end of this film and at the end of that struggle. Like, our relationship has been gravy ever since. You know, it's a completely different relationship that we have with each other. 